All right, welcome everybody to ITTV episode two. The topic today is coaching. Um, got myself, Scott Hassey, and Mr. President Jason Climore again. And we're joined by two of our coaches. We'll have them introduce themselves in a second. Reminder, if you guys, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram right now, um, we've got a few people on both. Um, follow us on all the social medias, at Indiana Twins. And also go to our YouTube page. Just type in YouTube, Indiana Twins, and then find our page and subscribe. Because we've only got like 50 or 60 followers. And we can't put YouTube.com slash Indiana Twins until we have 100 followers. I'm pretty sure. So go ahead and follow us there. Um, if you have any questions, email us, indianatwins at gmail.com. And let's get into it. So let's see. I'm going to have Jason introduce these guys briefly. Um, or Jason, I guess you can talk about the two of them real briefly. And then we'll kind of go around the room and have everyone real quick introduce themselves. So Jason, I want to hear your thoughts on it because I brought these guys on for a couple of reasons and I know you think highly of both of them. So just a quick note. So, I'll start with the veteran of the group, which is John. He's been with us off and on now, not to any control of his own, but um, for a few years, recently joined the, the board as well. So um, he's a 13U coach who was with us a couple of years prior to last year and then moved out to Arizona for his job and then came back and is back with us. So um, does a, a great job with the boys, very organized, very structured, runs very good practices, um, asks questions when needs to, um, was also kind of taken on a leadership role with uh, both the organization and with coaches. So um, does a fantastic job with his guys. I was thrilled to death to have him back and uh, looking forward to having him with us um, for as long as he wants to be here. Um, <laughs> and then, and then Wes is our, Wes is our, our fun loving new guy. Um, greatest personality in the entire world. Um, if he has an enemy, they're my enemy because I just don't know how, how uh, anyone can't get along with this guy. Um, just a bubbly personality brightens up the room and, kind of makes everybody laugh, and, and that carries over to the players as well. Um, probably not as mean as I am with the players, but uh, it, it, it makes for a nice chemistry with his group, and, and his boys all respond very well to him, and um, complete buy-in with everything, and um, he doesn't have a whole lot of help as far as an assistant staff goes. He's only got one guy helping him right now, so if there's any uh, any coaches out in the world that want to help him out, he, he would love to have them, I think, but uh, – uh, the Absolutely. fact that he's by himself, the fact that he's by himself, um, does a fantastic job um, with kind of keeping all those balls from falling on the ground. So he love having both these guys, and hopefully they're with us a while. All right. So John, introduce yourself. What team you're with, and uh, how long you or your kid or kids have been with the organization? Uh, like Jason said, John Roselli, I've been with the organization for, this will be, I believe, my fourth year. Um, like Jason said, we left last year because of my job. We had to move away. Um, my son has been with three organizations. We originally, when we moved out to Indianapolis, uh, we joined the Brownsburg, um, the Bulldogs, and then uh, Doug Haston, who's a friend of mine from work, turned me on to Jason Climore because his son used to work out with Jason um, and thought we would be a great fit. So he reached out to me. I reached out to Jason. Um, it worked out well for both of us. Um, last year, uh, like Jason said, because of moving to Arizona, my son played in Arizona for one year and we had the opportunity to move back to the uh, Twins and we jumped on it and we moved back to Indianapolis and now we're back to uh, the organization. Glad, we're absolutely glad to be back. Great organization. Wes, take it away. Terrific. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate the introduction. That was that was uh, humbling there, to say the uh, least. And yes, for any of those who are out there uh, looking for opportunities to coach, um, be happy <laughs> to send you my contact information. We can connect. But uh, that uh, that said, again, my name is Wes Mantooth. I, uh, I coach one of the 12U teams. Feel very fortunate to, to have uh, the support that we have here. 
with uh, the three of these guys that have joined me tonight, along with all the uh, the instructors at the Twins, uh, as well as the other coaches too. It's, it's been a great experience. I've been here, this is my second year. Uh, last year, 11U, um, this year, 12U. And I came in, I guess how I found out about the Twins originally was about four or five years ago, my, my oldest was looking for a change of scenery and through uh, some tryout opportunities, ended up uh, at a Twins tryout in what what hooked me, you know, it kind of had me from hello was the baseball IQ. And for any of you who are familiar with the Twins, you are you are familiar with baseball IQ, or you you haven't paid attention. Um, but one of the big draws to to help kids understand the the strategy behind the game, right? We we all talk about the physical aspects of the game, but the strategy of the game, in game situations, so on and so forth, and just the mental approach. Uh, to all scenarios, right? Every uh, every pitch, giving your best at every pitch. So um, it, again, that's not something that's brand new. That's not something that Jason just came up with or Scott just came up with this year. That's one of the foundations of the Twins uh, and, and they continue to, to build on that. I believe uh, when you guys were on here live Monday night, Jason, you were talking about the program that you put together, the, the trivia program. Um, so continuing to evolve and, and develop that. But uh, yeah, it's kind of my story. Uh, and uh, now it's my my 12 year old son, my 11 year old, whatever. No, that reminds me. I'm glad we're on here, guys. My my Mason turns uh, 12 on Monday. It's like remembering my anniversary. I'm glad to have friends. Happy to birthday, Mary. <laughs> well, I just realized I wasn't recording on the uh, Zoom, so we won't get all the fancy recordings. But luckily, Facebook records it, so we got that going. Um, Let's go back to John. You kind of already, both of you guys skipped ahead a little bit, but that's fine. Um, what, now that you guys are both in it, what do you think, John, you can go first, um, is the biggest difference? Just pick one thing from other organizations you've been in um, with, and with the Twins. You, you know, Scott, um, that's a, I like this question only because of the fact that last year we went West um, and moving to Arizona. My original thought process was baseball, 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 baseball um, until we actually got out there and don't get me wrong. There's baseball, baseball, baseball. My only concern was the amount and the, the word organization, you know, um, there was in one of the teams that we played for that JP played for, there was, they concentrated on defense um, and that was about it, you know? So you had to go out and get your own pitching coach. You had to go out and get your own hitting coach, but there then definitely no mental training. So the thing that I love about this organization is we have a, we're a one-stop shop. So to me that, I mean, and I know it's not dialed down to one thing, but being that now I've been outside and, and like I said, I was expecting big things from out West, um, but just never came through and to be back in the organization and to you know to be where we're at is just um second to none i don't think enough parents understand that all right wes yeah up to next not, well and i was gonna fair. say too um you've got a couple boys playing baseball how many teams or organizations combined have they played for and then what's the bit one of the biggest differences between any of those in the twins so a uh, loaded question. Um, I believe two, between the two of them, there's, there's four. Actually, we got started with, with Mason. We, we had an eight U kid pitch team and we used to run around and get our heads beat in. I mean, absolutely throttled uh, because there were no eight U kid pitch teams, but we thought it was great because there was a lot of innocence, right? It was like, we, we expected this and hope that the kids would get better and get used to getting hit and wouldn't scare them as much. And, and for some that, that worked out. Um, but that was a big, that was a national travel organization. Back in the day, it was, it was known as a, a local, local crew, uh, Indiana outlaws. And then it was absorbed into the, uh, the Evo Shield Canes, Midwest Evo Shield Canes. So that's where, that's where we were three years uh, before coming to the Twins. Um, and then my, uh, my oldest um, has played uh, for, yeah, for a couple of different organizations as well. And I, I sorry, I, I fall back to what, what John said, it's structure and having a lot of buddies who, who coach in other organizations and hearing the battles they have for uh, whether it's diamond time, it's facility time, 
um, also watching them uh, and realizing that they're having to do it all, all on their own and not having additional resources uh, through personnel to, to be able to help them, whether it comes, you know, to structuring practice plans, uh, working on various drills, whether it's, you know, infield, outfield, hitting, pitching, catching, uh, you name it, the baseball IQ and uh, all the all that weight falling on them uh, to, to try to come up with on their own. So I, I would I would come back to a lot of what John was talking about there. And, and again, it's, it's it's having the structure in the organization. And I believe it helps a ton with the boys knowing what to expect. So when there's a routine, they're not surprised, right? Whether that's in practice or, or if that's coming into a game, you know, before every game, right? We have the, the wake up warm up. Um, knowing that that's going to happen, that happens before every practice. There is that that comfort level, so they're not coming into a situation that's unknown and foreign to them. In in right, you, you know, the whole preparation leads to success in in so many ways. In in the more that we get off kilter from those, uh, the more disruption there is, and, and the lack of that that positive environment exists for them. Um, so, you know, from the top down, having the structure that, that all teams are to, uh, to follow, I think, uh, I think helps a ton. All right, Mr. President, uh, I'm going to cue you up here in a second, but I'm going to talk briefly about Twins U. I know over the years, ever since I joined the organization in 2014, um, that was a fun year because I got married that year. I got a new job that year. I was coaching high school, I was coaching with twins, and I was instructing with the twins while I was also doing lessons on my own on the side. Um, so what was the best part about that year? Um, that I made it through marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it could only go uphill from there. Um, but I mean, I came in and was like, oh, you know, there's this whole world of social media and YouTube and online, all those things. And we, we had those, we had the website and all that, but I was like, Jason, there's so much we can do with this. And him and I always said, and he's probably always said too, or, um, at some point we're going to get all this stuff online. We're going to be teaching online. We're just going to, we're, we're already more like a university or a college than we are just a team or anything like that. And people don't know that. And that's Jason, that's been your frustration with trying to um, have people understand what the twins are. And so then slowly, but you know, little by little, little we, you know, we put something on social media or we put something on YouTube, just kind of dabbling. Um, this year, I think it's <clears throat> taken a huge step. Uh, we've got what we call Twins University. I always worry about the branding with that, with the Minnesota Twins. So, um, you know, with calling this ITTV instead of Twins TV, just to make sure. But uh, it's been something we wanted to do. It's something that we've really taken up a notch. And the biggest thing this year I want to talk about, since the topic is coaching, tonight is kind of where the coaching certification idea came from, what it looks like, generally speaking, right now, and um, how excited you are about that, Jason. Well, it's probably the biggest undertaking we've ever done as far as overhead. Um, it's just, it was monumental to get all that stuff out, just from a time standpoint. Um, it came about just from a lot of the national guys, you know, they've got certification programs and you can go visit them for a weekend and be certified in this or certified in that. Um, that always intrigued me. Uh, basically wanted to have something similar to that in our program for our coaches. Uh, what we used to do was, I guess, kind of antiquated. We would have a meeting and as many coaches that could make it would come and we'd kind of talk shop about a given topic that night. And we call that Twins University. Uh, there was really no certifications or really, other than an attendance sheet, any proof that you were there and certainly no structure as far as what we were delivering. So I decided over the years to try to make that better. The coaches kind of wanted a, an easier format to get that information to them so that they weren't driving back and forth to the facility, you know, 15 times um, outside of what they already do. So we kind of decided to go with the video format and um, that's that's what we went with. So we've got over 20 hours of video that the coaches could consume if they were to do every single uh, certification that we do. Uh, there's extensive quizzes and, and parents, when I say extensive, there's 
there's a quiz with 87 possible points. Um, it's extensive. So the coaches, uh, they, they watch the videos, they answer the quizzes, they have to get 90% on the quiz to pass the quiz. And, and they can all tell you that I sent all of them uh, replies back saying you didn't pass and you have to take it again. Um, there's probably not a coach in the organization that didn't get that email that, hey, you didn't pass this one. Uh, submit the corrections to me, please. Um, but it was it was extensive. I think it's going to be uh, the, the biggest thing that's going to do is create consistency. So there's now going to be a very consistent way that we kind of teach everything. And I know we're trying to kind of move to this Chick-fil-A model where we, from 8U to 17U, we, we're trying to build franchises, little mini franchises, twins franchises. And, and I think that's going to be one of the first steps in that, in that all the coaches can now speak the same language. We can all use the same resources, uh, go back to those resources. Um, and it, it's just been huge. And I hope this is just the start of it. But um, yeah, it's one of the coolest things I think we've done as far as for our coaches. Um, it's, it's really been coach development. We were, we've always been big on player development. I think now we're, now we're in the coach development business as well, but so it's been a lot of fun. Um, a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing that you preach the last couple of years in our conversations is, um, teach a man to fish. So I know it's a biblical reference and all kind of other things, but, it just is so true. Um, whenever you'd have a frustration with a coach or a player, or I'd have a frustration with a coach or player or an instructor or something of, you know, we're teaching this, but it's not quite right. It's not really exactly what we're teaching. Um, it just, it wasn't really logical to say, hey, they should be doing exactly what I'm saying if I'm not teaching them exactly everything that I know. If I think I am and I'm doing a decent job, I can't expect that they're going to be perfect. Um, we would just go back and forth and Jason, you just continue to say, we just, we have to teach a man to fish because you and I can't, I can't do all the pitching. You can't do all the hitting. John can't do all the catching and Jeff can't do it. Like we have to have help because we're just at the point where we don't have two or three teams, you know, we're in double digit teams. I mean, everyone needs help and we need to get better and better because um, player development is at the heart of it. But in order to have the players developed, you need the help. And if you've got two or three or four guys at the top, I just if they don't have anyone that can help them instruct and teach, it's just not going to happen. Um, is there anything else you want to add about it before I kind of get some feedback from the guys? Well, I've had conversations with coaches over the last several days um, as Twins University was winding down. And I think kind of the common theme that I got in those conversations was, it, it's created, um, you kind of like don't know what you don't know. And I think a lot of the coaches were in that um, realm where they could look at a hitter or a pitcher and really didn't understand what they were looking at in some cases. Um, and, you know, we're not all baseball people. There's accountants and um, attorneys and, you know, everyone's in their own uh, livelihood. But this is something they're doing out, out of enjoyment. So they, they didn't all have the eye to see all that stuff. So what I think Twins University did was it allowed all of our coaches to look at a hitter and have the same scope or same spectrum of things that they were looking at in that hitter. And while they may not be experts at what they're seeing yet, we can now have dialogue and a collaboration on what they're seeing and some questions that may be coming up. And it, it's just brought us all in a, a tighter window of discussion on what we're, what we're seeing. And I, I think that's the huge first step is that there's now a common language. There's um, just an understanding of what they're looking at. And it's going to evolve and get better. But I think that was the, the big goal. And I think that's what the coaches are telling me in my conversations with them. So hopefully it's just the first step um, of many. All right, Wes, you've been in the trenches. You're head coach. You've got more responsibilities typically. And, you know, with your lack of assistant coaching, you've had to take more of these tests than some of the other ones. Um, now that you've been kind of in the trenches, you're through the um, intense video consumption and quiz taking. What's your experience been like with it? So, so I, 
I look at this from a, a couple of different ways. Um, and this isn't, this isn't intended to be brown nosing, but um, I started off by saying, you know, I have a ton of respect for the three of you on this and, and other, uh, other instructors. But yeah, let me get that out there. But I also, I, I look at this from the perspective, from a coaching standpoint, is that, that Jason and the board wants to have the best product on the field possible. And, and they want that product to be consistent, regardless if we're an eight U or nine U team or we're a 16, 17 U team. So regardless of what's on our jersey, if somebody was to come watch a practice or watch a game, they would be able to know, hey, you know what, that's a, that's a twins team right there, whether it's language, whether it's attitude, uh, whether it's skills, uh, you name it. So part of that, again, I go back to respect of, of what we have and what we have available that, that most, most coaches don't. Uh, when it comes to, you know, facilities, et cetera. So this is what we do in return for, for that part being easy is, is invest time in, in learning, which, uh, you know, none of us are too old to, to learn whatever the trade is. So what, what I found in this to be most eye-opening for me once we got into these videos here in the wintertime was that so much of them mirrored what we did in the fall. So we had a, a fall program, fall camp for, what was it eight, eight, 10 weeks? Somewhere in there. Eight weeks. Yep. Eight weeks, eight weeks. Um, Sunday, two hours, absolutely phenomenal. That training curriculum for those Sundays was mirrored after a lot of the videos in, in the big names that some of you might have heard of, whether it's, you know, it's Justin Stone, Eugene Blaker, and, and some of the other guys that are out there. But that was eye-opening for me because in my mind, here I was, you know, we all went through this, this fall program, which that wasn't just for coaches. That was obviously for our athletes as well. And then we get into some of this curriculum and the, the videos and, and the quizzes. And to be able to have that aha moment of, hey, this is what Jason's talking about. These are the guys that Jason's talking about. These are the guys that Scott's talking about um, in, in providing the credibility. Not that there were questions. I would, I would never doubt you. I would never doubt you guys. I mean, somebody else, my, my friend, my, my third assistant coach might doubt you. That's, that's who it was. Nobody else would. Um, but having that, that additional credibility and validity to, to what it is we're doing. So yeah, it, at times, was it like, Oh, geez, you know, here's a, a four hour, sorry, John, four hour catching video, but you know what? It was actually three hours and 50 minutes. I, I tell you right. that. So you know that I did watch it. Um, <laughs> and, and I got, I got through it all. Uh, but it was, it was, the, the opportunities, not only to see the, the coaches do this and the instructors in those videos, but also to, to have some practice drills come out of those because every one of them showed, uh, you know, it's, hey, here's the drill and here are the boys doing it and talking about what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong, um, et cetera. So it, it was a great learning opportunity for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's a tremendous value, again, to be able to provide that consistency uh, among all coaches. So we're, we're all uh, singing out of the same book. Yeah, it's been awesome. I, I commend all the coaches that have spent a ton of time doing that. Um, I don't think the first year coaches, no matter how much we tell them, realize how much we ask of them. Um, and you can look at it as we're asking a lot, but it's just, we want to help so much. We want their players and a lot of times their sons to be the best they absolutely can be on the field, like Wes was saying. And we're just trying to help them as much as we possibly can. That's what we want to do. We want to help make the players better, make the coaches better. Um, so it can look like we're asking a lot, but we just want to help as much as we possibly can. I mean, that's what lights us up. And that's what lights coaches up, that being able to help the players. So John, you've uh, kind of been on both ends of the education for it. So what's that been like on both ends with helping create the catching one and then also taking the other ones? Yeah, so help to so creating helping to create the catching one. I mean, and then Jason kind of touches on it, but there is hours and hours of um, videos and information and research that goes into it. At one point, I had called Jason and I told him, I said, "Man, it's this is like almost writing a book. I mean, there's just a ton of information that you have to gather to go through and to put it all together and what is relevant, what's not, um, and just kind of you know process all that. It 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 went, there was a lot more than I thought originally when uh, we had talked about doing it. Um, from the other end, as a coach, um, I like the Twins University just because of the simple fact that 
it's it teaches us all the same language. We all get the same information, and it's not like we have to go through and interpret it all. We get the same information. So I think the importance of us having the different age groups that are going up and, like you said, uh, speaking the same language. I don't think that people understand that enough to go, hey, that is crucial in a kid's development because there are so many different coaching styles and different ways that you can teach things that you can actually end up confusing kids more than you do actually getting them to understand what's going on. And the fact that we go through, and because of the Twins University program, um, everybody does speak the same language and it it just makes it more of a streamlined process. And it makes it, I think, easier, not only for the coaches, but especially for the kids. Yes. I hadn't really thought of it, but with you having left last year and then to come back this year, it was all, I mean, not necessarily picking up right where you left off, but, in a way, it kind of was, I'd imagine. Yeah, and you know what? It, it, it was even just to see the organization grow from the year that I left it to when we came back. I mean, that's what I love about this organization is the fact that, you know, we're, we're constantly moving forward, constantly trying to find a way to get better. And, you know, when I left, it was like Jason said, if Twins University was a couple of weeknights that we went and, and he covered hitting and, you know, you covered pitching and, you know, we had different co- coaches kind of come in and have different topics. But now that information, even if like, let's say um, if I went to the Twins University the year before and I had any questions, I'd have to reach out directly to, you know, somebody, whoever is instructing that particular subject. Now I can just go back through, rewatch the videos and watch them as many times as I need to, to make sure I have a clear understanding of what it is that we're trying to do. And to me, that's huge. I mean, you know, you, it doesn't get much better than that. Yep. All right. Does anyone else have anything to add to that, Jason, Wes, anybody? No. Um, no. I, it was just a major undertaking, and I'm I'm glad it's in the rearview mirror now. Um, but I but I do think it was, it's going to be a long term positive. Yep. And I would I would just add to it. You know, as you look. And I know this is not a forum to be able to take shots at other organizations and not trying to do that. But it, from a parent perspective, I think this provides a lot of, a lot of confidence from, from their standpoint too, knowing that, hey, my, my son is going to be coached by someone who had to go through this training program, training curriculum. That doesn't, again, as I mentioned earlier, make us all geniuses by any means, but it, it does force us to have some consistency. In, in exposure to a variety of these areas. And I, I guarantee you, absolutely guarantee you, 90 plus percent of other travel baseball teams, organizations, um, don't put their coaches through this. Don't make this available to, to their, their kids. You know, here we are talking about it for coaches. Jason's obviously put this together for, their, for the kids as well, which is, is phenomenal. And I know some get stir crazy to, to sit in front of a, a computer and watch this stuff. But again, I think it, it just goes back to reinforcing what we're teaching them in practice that this is real life stuff to be able to see see somebody on tv right see somebody on a computer doing the same thing holy cow that's really cool we just did that in practice the other day um so i I think it provides credibility at all levels wes i just thought of this so it's not something that i'm sure jason's probably maybe gotten some feedback on this from guys that have been i don't know a little bit more transparent or open about it but um in as much transparency as you want to have what and I'll ask John this too, Wes, how did you feel joining the organization, hearing we teach, you know, the same thing, and this is the way we do it, and which that's the kind of a loaded comment, but what was your initial response? Like, and I don't know how you initially heard it, if it was through an email or a practice or a meeting or something or talking to Jason, but was that something that you kind of like there was a conflict with it or was it a little uncomfortable or was it slow going or how did you initially take that? Yeah, that's an interesting thought. I, I tell you my first reaction to that is easy. It, 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 was, it was like, oh, wow, this is great. So I don't have to figure out all this stuff on my own. The old, old school versus new school, whatever capacity of the game that it was, it was like, this, this is phenomenal. So I have, not only do I have all these guys that I can lean on and talk to and ask questions, um, I, my, my, the boys on my team, the boys on everyone's team have exposure, uh, to different coaches and instructors throughout the organization. And it's not as though 
you know, there, there's one kid in, in one night is getting five different directions from five different instructors. It, it doesn't work that way. It's a cohesive, collaborative approach to each one of those kids. So we're not putting, you know, a bunch of head trash into them. So they're all confused and walk out thinking, I have, I have no idea what he just told me. And now I, I don't even know how to hit a baseball. I might as well, might as well close my eyes. Um, so from, you know, again, all, all capacities, let's say hitting, building, um, catching, pitching, base running, you name it. it. It for me, it was that aha. This is this is awesome. There is a structure. Um, not having to come up with it. again all different ideas and all different approaches uh, on my own. I'm going to have help uh, during the uh, the twins camps. Um, it's not just me every single you know three times a week, right? That's what we were running at two week days, two week nights, and a and a weekend. Um, and, and knowing that at some point uh, it could get stale, but to be able to have exposure to different people, uh, different ideas, different approaches, again, for me, it was, it was refreshing and, and easy is maybe not the right word, but it's the first word that came to my mind when knowing that this wasn't all on me. And, and last year, how this started too, before we had the, the online videos was having the coaches meetings on Sunday night. What was, I think, oh man, that was like for, I think we met on Christmas morning and Christmas night, didn't we, Jason? <laughs> the last two in? Maybe it wasn't that intense. <laughs> but it was for, again, another eight eight to ten weeks on Sunday nights to come in. And, and again, I hey, you know, you had Sunday night family, but once you got in there, it was fun uh, to be able to learn from different guys and, and talk through different scenarios. Um, and and it, was, it was a ton of fun. So I, I think that that's, you know, we talk about the ability to, to recruit kids from the development program we have here. I think the same holds true for, for some of the coaches out there who may be a little skeptical about the resources they have access to in, in another environment. Well, John, you, you joined a few years back. Um, Do you have any hesitancy? I mean, it was a little bit different back then, but really, I mean, the, the core of it was still, hey, that we teach the same thing. Yeah, I, I had a I had quite a bit of hesitancy, hesitancy just because of the fact that you know, I had already coached for 20 years. I had already brought in a ton of experience. You know, Jason and I both had worked nice and there was many of conversations that he had had that he would be like, hey, no, I I hit, I did this, I did that. And, you know, and it took the conversation of Jason going, hey, if we were to actually slow down and videotape and do what it is that you're doing, what you're feeling and what you're actually doing are two totally different things. And once we kind of, kind of got through that. I mean, you know, it, it opened up a new way for me almost to look at coaching. I mean, like I said, I had done or done it for over 20 years, not to say that I was ever bored with it, but the knowledge that Jason had all of a sudden had opened up a library to me. And to me, it just, it got, it was exciting again to be um, coaching and being that, you know, where the organization was coming from. I was, I actually ended up being excited to, to be a part of this. And, you know, when we decided to move away, um, that was one of the things that was, was I was going to miss is because of the fact that, you know, Jason started, you guys started something that was absolutely just unlike a lot of other organizations are doing right now. Um, and to walk away from that and was, was hard, but to be, again, being a 20 plus year coach, having to come in and learn, you know, old dog learning new tricks was, yeah, it, it was a little bit of, of swallowing some pride and going, okay, admitting to some of the stuff that I had been doing was wrong or the way I was looking at it was wrong. Um, and, you know, by, by getting a part of this organization, it gave me a new way to actually look at things and to kind of be able to um, explain and to relate to the kids that we were coaching and all that kinds of stuff to, to be at a better format almost for them, you know, a, a more of, I guess, an understanding of what it was that we were actually doing. Yeah. I think that, that's a great perspective, John. You know, for me, this is what I, I think year five in, in coaching. So not the, the wealth of background that, that you had. And, and I, yeah, I, I certainly appreciate where you're coming from there. If the, you know, hey, this is how, this is how I've done it for so long. And I'm sure you had a tremendous amount of success over the years. Um, I, I think it's great for some of the, the new guys too. You, you know, so we have a handful of, of kids that are right out of college. I think maybe one or two are still in college to, to some degree. Um, and they play baseball, right? They play. There, there's a big difference between playing and, and coaching and interacting and, and watching, you know, how everything plays plays out in the game. Um, so having something like this for them, I, I think, is is a lot of help. I can't speak for them, so I, I should just shut up and go on. 
Um, but that's that's kind of what I, I think of when I, I think of those who go on that category. Jason, what what would you add with what's <clears throat> for prospective coaches or even coaches that maybe still have um, a little bit of hesitancy? What's the what's the biggest pushback? Um, I think what John said, he alluded to it with just tons of phone calls that you have with guys. Um, I actually had a buddy text me. He said three minutes into <clears throat> Monday's um, live video that we did. He said, what do you say? I should, I should find the text. He said, your buddy Jason had me sold in the first three minutes. So I think just your passion typically wraps people in and then your constant conversation back and forth and your ability to listen and both kind of teach um, seems to be the biggest unlock for coaches. But what's the biggest pushback or feedback you get from coaches when they're like, hey, listen, I've I played at the highest level. I've coached at high levels. I've been doing this a long time, much like John. Um, what's that usually look like? I'm sure it's not always like Wes and John's experience. Oh yeah, we've had we've had a mixed bag of that over the years, where it scared some guys away. Unfortunately, um, I think the two words that come to mind with anyone, whether they stay or leave, is um, overwhelming and intimidating. Um, I, I definitely think those two words sum it up pretty well but I I do think that um, and anyone that knows me knows that my passion for baseball is off the charts so I never won't answer my phone I never won't have a conversation usually you're going to be like will this guy ever shut up um, it'll be more that route than it will be um, hey he won't take my phone call or he won't call me back um, so I think that's where I've tried to make things comfortable on new coaches, even if they were resistant a little bit, is that I'm there for them to call and talk to, and we can work through things and try to come to an agreement on, you know, what's flexible, what's not flexible. Um, and I want as many smart guys in the organization as we can get in the organization, but we do have a way of doing things. We have a structure in place. Um, it's probably more a structure in place than it is a way of doing things. I mean, we're pretty, pretty flexible as far as, um, you know, all our guys don't hit the same way or throw the same way or any of that. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of flexibility there, but we do have to create a structure. Um, and this always goes back to the kids. It's about, it's about having a structure for the kids so that there's consistency. And that's what all parents want at their, at their kids' schools, right? They want, they want their work day or their school day to be, you know, consistent. They know what they're going to expect when they get off the bus and they know what, what to expect homework wise. And, and they know what the, the teacher's temperament's going to be general. I mean, that you just want consistency. So that's, that's what I try to have those conversations with the coaches that um, structure scares some people, because if you don't fall, if you don't fall into the scope of that structure, uh, you may feel like an outlier or uh, you may feel like, you know, you're being forced a, a square peg into a round hole sometimes maybe, but um, it, I've just got a big passion for it. And I, I love talking baseball and I try to get them in that way. I mean, I think if you're a baseball guy, you like to talk baseball and we can, we can get to a, a mutual ground there, but um, no, it's uh, I love all our coaches. Our coaches are fantastic and um, we're always looking for more talent to come in and, and help the boys out. So all right, the Jason, next thing I've got. Up. Oh, that's that's the better. Sorry, I just had to throw it in when it comes to baseball. I, I like that phrase a little bit better. Eat up with it. Consume, which is a great thing. And I think that's, uh, you know, that that is uh, relayed on to, to everyone else. And it's not, and, and I would say too, it's not just in the way you interact with coaches. I was just having a flashback. And again, I need to stop talking here and I will. So five years ago, when, when my oldest son played, I remember it was probably in December. And at that point in time, you had like 100 kids. And I remember you calling him by his first name one night. And I'm like, what in, what is, how did this happen? How does this guy know my son? And I tell you, my son doesn't stand out any more, any more than the next kid. I don't know, he's, you know, a toehead. But um, I, that was impressive <laughs> to, to me. And, and so I, I go with that is, Everything is not intense. It, it's not intense. I, I, I do agree. And I think everyone here and anyone in the organization would say that, yeah, you're extremely intense when it comes to baseball. But it's also, I, I think there's a big, there's a big Indiana Twins family. 
you know, it comes along with it too. Everybody cares. There's a, there's a give a crap factor, if you will, from, from every coach and every instructor for, for every kid in, in their development and success. Well, Les, while you're still on there, I, I've got two more questions, but before I ask that one, I'm going to actually, as the, I sent you guys some of the questions. It's that actually the very last one. So we're going to get into on the last two ones, kind of your guys' coaching style. Um, I'm kind of interested to hear more about that <clears throat> from all three of you, but Wes, you, you know, a couple kids playing ball, you've got options, whether it's um, location, price, ex, uh, experience, schedule, whatever it is, to choose between rec ball, um, whether it's little league and pony league, those types of things, and travel ball. And I know there's not a right and a wrong answer, um, but what turned you on to travel baseball? Why do you choose to, you know, have your kids in travel baseball and coach in travel baseball? Uh, so I didn't. That that was my that was my boy's choice to to be honest with you, and and I followed them uh, in that capacity. Now, if I had a little more control in that situation, I, I would have done the same thing. But it, it was their desire um, to to be in the position that they're in now. I you know my my youngest two I, I coach now a couple of years ago we we didn't realize it. Um, he was he absolutely despised the situation we were in. Um, and through conversation, it came up and like, hey, you want to you want to look elsewhere? He's like, I, it's bad for me to say as a parent, but for those listening, you think it's good. He's like, I didn't think I had a choice. And I'm like, whoa, that was eye opening. That was a real eye opening experience. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You have a choice, but we'll, we'll follow you wherever you go. And, and that's what brought us to, to where we are now. So I, I would say it's I've been more of a, a follower than a, a leader in that, Scott, in terms of what it is the boys want to do. John, what about you? Well, I agree. I think um, JP made the decision ultimately to go to travel baseball. Um, I don't think he did it intentionally to say, hey, dad, I want to go to travel baseball. But just by all the, the clues and the cues that he was given to say, hey, he was frustrated with what was going on. You know, hey, dad, why do we all have to rotate? Why do we all have to do this? You know, and, and why can't some of the kids who are better just continue to play? Um, you know, so he kind of he kind of led like I agreed with Wes. He kind of led the direction on how we're going to go with it. Um, obviously, we took him to a couple of different places to try out, and the travel ball organization ultimately went to our decision, my wife and I's, to go. Hey, we're going to sign on with this team uh, with the Twins. But yeah, I agree that that he in order. I think most kids in order to make that decision have to be ready for travel ball. It can't be the parent that comes out and says, "Hey, you're going to play travel ball," and if the kid's not ready, then it's they're not ready. You know, I think that they have to be a part of that discussion and they have to be kind of in a situation where not necessarily that they're frustrated with Little League, but that they've, um, you know, they want something more. That's, <clears throat> I'm glad I asked that question because I've got a one-year-old. I haven't been in that um, scenario yet. And um, I know I've, I've seen the conversation had in the past and um, I've been in the conversation on choosing between, and I've got some friends that have reached out and, you know, do I do travel or do I not? Do I stay in the rec league? Um, I guess I just hadn't really thought about that. That's a really powerful answer. Um, all right, Jason, I'm gonna get you back in. So these are more uh, you guys individually. It's just, this one, I got two questions for each of us. So we'll go around the house for uh, the first question. So coach Climore, what type of coach are you and why you coach like that or what do you think is the the impact of that coaching style it doesn't have to be right or wrong but what do you do and why do you think it works so anyone that knows me knows that uh um i'm just a serious person in general um it takes it takes being around me a long time to get to the the comical side of jason um, i'm just a pretty serious guy in general so i'm like that as a coach um i i take the responsibility of being a coach very seriously. Um, I know that every single second I spend with a kid, um, I could impact their success and failure and their love or, or dislike for the game. And that that's a, a burden that I take very seriously. Um, every time I have a practice, every time I'm at a game, every time I'm around kids, I want to try to make them better at baseball, love baseball more, um, get more out of the game. 
Um, I'm trying to pass my passion on to every player I interact with. Um, and, and I realize that my passion is very heavy and sometimes it's too much at times. And, and there's times that I'm probably too intense or too serious because of that. But that's what my goal is. It has, it has nothing to do with anything more than I want to share my passion of baseball with boys. And um, I, if I could just create two or three or help create two or three kids um, in my coaching career that love baseball half as much as I do, then that, that's been a success to me. Um, that, that's what it's all about to me is just loving baseball. I, I love baseball more than I love most humans. Um, I, I just absolutely love the game of baseball. Uh, and that's what I try to pass on to my kids. So I guess the answer to my, my question would be is passion. Um, my coaching style is passionate. Um, I could sum it up in one word. John, what about you? Um, I think the reason why I like to coach and why I do it is to, is the teamwork, you know, is the, I want to teach the kids that, Hey, you've, you have to, there's always one, two things that I ask for every practice and every game is effort and attitude. Um, you know, we call ourselves a pack. We, we did this years ago. We would consider ourselves a wolf pack. Um, and I, I don't think you can get by not only in baseball, but in life without being a part of a team. Um, you know, and to me, that's what we're ultimately getting these kids ready for is to not only be a part of a team, but to be a part of a bigger team, um, you know, in, in their school and in their communities and when they get older. And so that's what my whole thing is about is, is making sure that these guys don't leave one guy behind, that they are there um, for each other to make sure that they're there, you know, for the ups and for the downs, because, you know, at any point in time, we're all going to have a down. I mean, baseball is a game of failures. And so at any point in any given time, it could be any one of them, including coaches. So, you know, my whole thing is, 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 is making sure that they compete as a team. Um, obviously, they're going to compete, compete as individuals to make sure that they earn themselves a position. But on game day, it's all about teamwork. And it's about picking the next guy up and handing it off to him. So that, that's my whole thing is to um, control your effort, control your attitude, and be a good teammate. Wes? My trap, those are, those are hard to follow. Um, you know, I, I think I, I feel like I've been a cheerleader in this whole session. Um, but there are a lot of positive things to, to talk about. Um, fortunate that we, we have the program here. So the, the boys get the best instruction, and I truly mean that, the best instruction possible. So they, they have a solid foundation to build from, uh, whether that's, again, us working during winter workouts um, or it's getting out in the spring and summer uh, here eventually um, in, in putting it all together. But so from building, building off that, I always preach um, before our practices that, that we're going to provide them with a positive environment that translates into positive attitudes that enables them to have positive outcomes and to try to feed off that energy. And, and I, intense. I mean, if there's one word about being a coach, it's intense. And um, the, the boy, I, I got a lot of feedback from the, the parents. Um, I don't know what it was, three or four weeks ago, we had a practice and, and I lost it. Um, absolutely lost it towards the end of practice because the boys were doing phenomenal. Absolutely, their attitudes, there was no chitter, chatter, there was no talk during practice and they were nails. And it was, I, I could not have been more proud of them. And so I go from one extreme to the other and I get in trouble at home for that a lot because it's hard to decipher, is he happy or is he mad? And so that's where I went in, in that practice. Um, but but the kids the kids enjoyed it. And so I think it's that, you know, the intense and the passion and in making sure that they know that I'm supporting them at all times. And, and I love the comments that, that Jason and, and John had there um, as well and enabling them to, to be successful in, in anything they do, helping them understand teamwork, right? Because you know what, we got 12 kids on our team. You, the older you get, the more kids are gonna be on the team. Be, hey, be a good teammate while you're on the, while you're on the bench, be a good teammate. It's not, you're not there because you did something wrong necessarily. It's the flow of the game and what we're trying to do from a strategy standpoint and just the timing of, of how th things fall out and, and the more that, that you learn in that scenario and those acute situations of sitting on the bench more than anything is going to benefit them down the road in, in life and I know it's hard to have those conversations with 10 or 11 or 12 year olds 
Um, but I, I always hope, and I always think in the back of my mind, I hope they just take away one or two things that we even tried to instill in them. And it's not just me, it, it's, the whole, it's the whole crew um, and something that they can take away and, and remember the next year and they build on that. And then it just compounds uh, over time. So in, in, intense. Um, and, and I think it would, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't want to bring my wife into this conversation, but um, intense either way. Yeah. Well, you already brought her in. So. <laughs> um, I'll keep you on the hot seat. So this is our last question for everybody. <clears throat> um, I'm, we've all messed up a lot, but uh, name a, a time or maybe it's a theme of things that in the past or even currently that you've messed up on as a coach and then what you're doing now, either in spite of that or because of that, or what do you do now? <laughs> Oh man, we, yeah, we're about over, right? Yeah, because it's <laughs> taking a long time. So I, I you know, made, made mistakes in, in, in all capacities, um, in a ton of capacities. And um, to, to pick one would, would be tough. I, I think it, it maybe it's a, it, it falls back onto the comments I just mentioned of, of intent in, in getting better in directing that intensity in a more positive fashion. I, yeah, I, I think that for me is my biggest mistake at times of, you know, getting frustrated in, the, in a situation. Um, a lot of times it has to do with lack of effort, but, um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying I've, I blast kids out there on the diamond. That's not what I do, but, um, you know, maybe handle them in a different, a little bit different manner, uh, a little bit calmer tone, um, still being direct with them. I have no problem. None of us have problems with mistakes. It's going to happen. We're going to make more than any of those kids out there. We all know that. Um, in a season. So, you know, we'll, we'll accept that fact. Um, but when it comes to effort, it's just, you know, pulling them aside and having a conversation and, and, and addressing it in a more direct and an immediate fashion um, to an, to an, in making it clear that there are consequences. And that's, hey, you, you're going to be on the bench and uh, you're going to change your attitude um, quickly or, or you're going to stay there and, and help me um, pick up baseballs or water, whatever it is that I do while I'm, while I'm in there. Um, so that, I, I guess that, that would be it, Scott. It's a, that's a tough question to answer, man. I, I could go a million different directions because yeah. there's, there's a lot that I need to get better at and a lot of mistakes that I've made, but that's, that's the one, um, it, that's a personal challenge for me without a doubt. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the reason why I asked that question is because I think it's important to show everyone that, you know, we're not all perfect and, you know, having all four of us on there, I think we're all really good at acknowledging where we uh, have messed up or where we need to, you know, improve on. And then we get after it and then try to fix it. It may not get fixed, but we're working at it. So I appreciate the honesty. So John, you're up next. Yeah. Um, I think mine is going to fall more along more of the lines of aggressiveness. Um, I'm a very aggressive coach, you know, whether it's on the field, whether it's in the game, whether it's at practice. Um, and I often tell the guys, the boys to look, I can't be more aggressive than you are because I'm out there running around. Yeah, here we go. And I look back and I'm like, Hey, where's the rest of the team? At? And a lot of times <laughs> I get on them for that, but I have to still have an understanding of going, okay, it's, it's a, it's a game. And I don't mean to say that out loud, Jason, I, I can see you're already going, Arr! But yeah, you know what I mean? It, ultimately, it's a game and it's about us trying to compete and to learn and to get better and stuff like that. But I think sometimes with uh, my aggressive style, you can't have an aggressive coach without having aggressive kids. Because at that point, I'm pushing the kids to do things that they're not willing to do. And they're not like, you know, especially like in a game, hey, I'm trying to get them to take home while that extra tough little steps that they're not being aggressive on ends up can cost us to play at the plate because, you know, they had a hesitation. And it, it's it's to me, it's a matter of, um, me getting to understand and to know which one of my players are the ones that are more aggressive rather than just treating them all and say, hey, we're all in, we're all go, go, go. When um, I, have to, I have to learn and make an understanding that, okay, this kid right here, we're working on his aggressiveness. However, this isn't the person in the place time to send them. Um, you know, so I think that's sometimes I get a little bit, I run tough practices um, ask any of the kids that I have. I, I run very straightforward, strict practices. And, and again, um, I, I demand a lot out of the boys. And sometimes I need to make sure I take a step back and make sure that they're with me um, versus kind of leaving them behind. Yeah. 
All right, Jason, <clears throat> you get to finish off this question. So I'm pretty sure I speak for a lot of the coaches when I say that I admire you as a coach, um, just from a standpoint of if you've, um, <clears throat> I mean, just how you run the organization. I've seen you coach in games and how you have the game well structured and you've got each coach understanding what their role is and they crush it as coaches, the players, whether they're reciting different things that you have them do every game or they're doing, just doing whatever they need to do. Um, <clears throat> to the fact that you've got, I don't know how many, 15 years or whatever it is, or maybe it's more of practice plans all saved. Um, so I'm curious to hear because although sometimes that can be overwhelming to people or maybe intimidating, I know you're not perfect. You know, you're not perfect and you're willing to admit that. So where have you screwed up and what do you do to balance that or try to fix it? Well, given that I'm a big stats guy and a sabermetrics guy, I'm going to throw a new stat out at you guys. My mistakes to minutes and day ratio is really high. Um, I probably lead the league in that stat. Um, so uh, doing this 18 years, I've made a lot of mistakes and still do make a lot of mistakes. The biggest ones for me, I always tell people that my greatest strength is my greatest weakness. And I, and I totally – believe that. Um, I border on the line every single second of the day um, on, on that passion fence of going over. And that, that's what gets me in trouble as a coach as well as my temperament and my body language. Um, I, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Um, because my passion level runs so high, my emotions run really high usually. And so the biggest challenge for me is just to sit back and enjoy it all and not immerse myself too much in it because of the passion. It just sucks me into it. And sometimes my temperament and uh, body language uh, get revealed uh, more than I'd like for them to. And, and that's something that I've gotten a lot better with as I've gotten older. Um, people that see me now might be, holy cow, what were you earlier? Um, but it's something I have to constantly work on, not just in baseball and all facets of my life. I just, um, I just run really high with passion. And, and so my intensity, it, it runs right there with it. So that that's the battle that I fight with, with the kids. Um, but I'm with John. I, I try to run a pretty serious practice, a pretty structured practice. Um, I look at things as we've only got so many minutes in the day. So when it's time to practice, we have to get absolutely every second we can out of that practice. And in order to do that with little kids, you have to have structure and you have to, you know, keep them in line. And, and so it, it has nothing to do with, with being mean or, or anything like that. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm constantly going back as the president of the organization is how do these parents, get the absolute most bang for their buck every second that they're in this organization. Like that is literally what keeps me awake at night. So I have to run a practice that, that exemplifies that. So, so we're going to try to every single second we're there, make it productive, um, make it valuable. And, and, and so in doing that, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, just the passion runs over sometimes. That's the thing I battle. Um, so, but again, my, my mistakes, it's, uh, yeah, it would be embarrassing to see that list. <laughs> All right. Anyone have, I'll let, Jason, I'll let you have kind of the closing words before I close out, but John or Wes, any other closing thoughts or things to say for on the uh, topic of coaching? Um, you know, again, to go back to comparing the different organizations, you know, there, <laughs> There is out West, like I told you, there is nothing going on, like even having this tonight, you know, just getting a group of coaches together with you guys and just having a discussion about coaching in itself. Um, I don't know of any other organizations that are, are even doing this um, or we'd even come close to what it is that we're doing. So to me, that's, that's, you know, solid. I mean, I'm in, you know, and even if, um, you know, once JP gets old enough and, um, don't know what my role will be at that point, but I mean, still, I'm a big believer in this organization and I'm just glad to be a part of it. Wes, anything to add? I, I second all, all the above. Um, appreciate the opportunity to, to be here tonight. And I think it's, you, you know, part of it is uh, feel fortunate to be 
to be here, whether as a coach or a parent, knowing what we have. Um, and uh, if, if I'm on the outside, I'm jealous uh, without a doubt. And honestly, that's that's really probably what got us back here a couple of years ago. Is like uh, we we need to get back in uh, to that, and and that's where that where it's at. And I I think over time, uh, it's just going to con continue to grow, and it'll be a be a magnet for for uh, for talent, whether that's just great parents who are passionate about their kids getting better. It's coaches and in, in uh, the, the athletes themselves. Jason, anything else on coaching or any, uh, just any, anything? Yeah. I mean, I'm, the thing that I'll probably you know, I'll add here is just the amount of appreciation and, and love I have for all of our coaches. Um, I mean, what they went through for Twins University is nothing short of remarkable for guys that aren't getting paid to do it. Um, I'm probably harder on our coaches than I am any other group of definitely the players. Um, I'm more difficult on the coaches probably than, than the players and parents. But um, I, I'm just so appreciative that they, they buy in and that they take pride and in, in what we're doing and what they're doing. And they are, are following that same example of trying to make every single second that they're with their teams as productive as possible so that parents see the value that they're getting. And, and I mean, that, that comes down to our coaches that do that. So I'm extremely appreciative of our coaches, love our coaches, the effort that they put in. Um, it's really what makes us, um, what we are. Um, so I, mean, I guess I'll wrap up on that. Just a great appreciation for all that the coaches do. All right. Well, I mean, I kind of just, I'll, I guess I'll echo that. Um, I know I have a lot more conversations kind of behind the scenes on all the coaches do with Jason and to just echo that. I mean, he, one of his biggest struggles is, like you said, being the president of the organization. <clears throat> um, sometimes you do have to be the bad guy. And that sucks because he loves just having those conversations with the coaches and just talking to the guys. And I mean, coaches are baseball guys and he's a baseball guy. So I know Jason, you get, you know, torn sometimes and it's, it's not the easiest thing, but I appreciate, you know, that you're able to handle those things. I, I admire that you're able to, um, I appreciate John and Wes, you guys coming on. Truthfully, I could have reached out to organize this with a handful of other coaches. We've got a ton of, guys that are just bought in, putting in the same amount of time as these two guys. Uh, they're just two of the first guys that came to mind. Um, and I plan to do more of this to organize this kind of stuff. And I'm looking at right now, Friday, trying to get on a couple parents. So um, I appreciate your guys' time. And if no one else has anything, I think we can kind of uh, end this one now. <laughs>